HyperX released its first gaming mouse recently, the Pulsefire FPS, but it did look and feel familiar to Razer's flagship mouse, the Death Adder Elite. Because of their similarities, we did a side-by-side -side comparison and tested both of them in competitive games to find out which one is better. The Pulsefire FPS retails for $50, and the Death Adder Elite goes for $70. While it's possible to snag Razer's mouse for a little bit cheaper, the initial difference in MSRP makes HyperX's offering a little bit more attractive right out of the gate. The HyperX Pulsefire FPS weighing in at 95 grams is equipped with the PixArt 3310 optical sensor capable of up to 3200 DPI, and it features a sequential on-the-fly DPI switch for four settings. The left and right clicks are built with Omron switches, and the mouse has red backlighting. The Death Adder Elite weighing in at 105 grams has Razer's own 5G optical sensor and it offers up to 16,000 DPI and it incorporates an up and down DPI switch. This mouse's buttons feature Razer mechanical switches that are also made in partnership with Omron and has full RGB chroma backlighting. Technical details are all well and good, but how do these mice fit in the hand and how do their buttons feel? Let's get into how they perform. Those that prefer a palm grip will feel right at home with these mice, though the peak of the hunch on the pulse fire is a bit more prominent and fits slightly deeper into your palm. As someone who prefers a claw grip, I found both mice to fit just fine, but the slightly heavier death adder did weigh on my fingertips over time. If you use a pure fingertip grip, you might find the pulse fire bulky and the death adder a little too long. This can affect your balance when picking up the mouse during game sessions. Though they do look similar, the grooves on the side for your thumb and pinky are much more deeper on the Death Adder, putting less pressure on your fingers when picking up the mouse. Both have rubber surfaces on the left and right sides that provide more than enough grip to prevent the mouse from slipping. The Pulsefire has a large rubber surface area, but as a consequence, its side buttons are smaller compared to the Death Adder. Side buttons on both mice have a satisfying responsive click, but those who constantly use them in fast-paced games like Overwatch, will find the Death Adder side buttons easier to access. When it comes to the left and right buttons, the clicking on the Death Adder tends to be squishy, which hampers your ability to have fast and responsive repeated clicks. This could affect your performance to varying degrees depending on the required action in games. The Pulsefire did not have this issue, as its left and right buttons offer solid tactile clicks. Any peripherals that we test, we put through its paces in the latest competitive games. Counter-Strike Global Offensive is my go-to first-person shooter, so I played two full rounds of competitive mode, one with each mouse. The Pulsefire proved to be slick, accurate, and comfortable throughout the match. Whether I was sniping for picks or taking point on entry frags, the Pulsefire worked incredibly well. The Death Adder felt just as precise, but also more ergonomic and easier to grip due to its deeper grooves. However, its squishy clicks came back to haunt me when I had to use semi-auto weapons that fire as fast as I could click. In Overwatch, the side buttons were truly battle-tested since I mapped a standard ability to one and my ultimate to the other. The size of the Death Adder's buttons made it much easier to toss a flashbang at a moment's notice or lock down targets at high noon with McCree. I found it more comfortable to line up a Dragon Strike with Hanzo and pull off a barrage with Farah at the exact time I needed. For a more frantic, fast-paced shooter test, I booted up Doom and played through the Foundry level with both mice. Both had pinpoint tracking that kept up with the constant 180-degree turns and targeting of quick-moving enemies. However, this highlighted a small issue with the pulse fire. While it has a flexible braided cord, it's situated toward the bottom of the mouse and at times I noticed the cord brushing up against the mouse pad. It didn't hold me back from mowing down demons, but it could be slightly bothersome in a more competitive environment. Both the HyperX Pulse Fire and the Razer Death Adder Elite have plenty to offer to gamers, with their accurate, smooth tracking, strong grip, and ergonomic fit. The Death Adder has its upsides, like better side buttons and deeper grooves. But between these two mice, I would actually recommend HyperX's Pulsefire FPS because of its better tactile clicks, its lighter weight, and its better price. At the end of the day, the best mouse is one that fits your needs and your preferences. My hope is that you now have a better idea of what to expect if you use either one of these mice. I also hope that you liked this video, so if you did, give it a thumbs up. If you're also in the market for a keyboard, check out my review of the Logitech G413 and subscribe to our channel here at GameSpot. Thanks for watching.